Hey guys, Aussie Prison Talkie. Today I'm going to be talking about being punked out in prison. Now, today what I'm going to be speaking on, this happened when I was doing my uh, third bid, my third prison sentence. Uh, that I did and uh, at this stage I was doing three and a half years I was doing uh, three and a half years for robbery and um, when this uh, all went down this was in Lithgow Correctional Centre I was in Lithgow Correctional Centre and um, I ended up serving the whole three and a half years there and that's a maximum security prison there in uh, Lithgow Correctional Centre it's a, it's a maximum security prison and uh, at this stage like I was in there for probably like a couple of months um, and then we get like some new inmates we get some new inmates in and um, you know like I don't consider myself an inmate I'm a convict I'm an ex-convict you know because I've done like 17 years all up in prison so I consider myself a convict and um, yeah, this day we got some uh, new inmates in, and I know there was probably like about uh, six of them, and I noticed the uh, the guy at the end, you know, he was he was like he was only like 18, first time in, you know, and he seriously looked about 15, you know, and uh, you could see, you know, it was written all over his face. You know, that he was nervous and he was scared. You know what I mean? You could even see, you know, he's like his hand shaking a bit. You know, and I thought to myself, damn, this kid's going to have a hard time. You know, and um, so what, what ends up happening is like, you know, they get allocated to all their cells. You know, and uh, this kid end up getting put in, you know, to the cell above me because, you know, in the wing. I was in like, you know, you got two levels, you got like the ground floor and then you've got the second level, you know, and uh, second tier and um, he get put on the top in the corner, you know, and um, this poor kid, you know, like the first day, like he was in there for not even, you know, not even an hour by this stage. And already, you know, you, you've got guys coming in, you know, standing over him. For his tobacco and you know for his coffee you know and he wasn't standing up for himself and you know that's a big no-no in prison you got to stand up for yourself you know what i mean you just can't let shit like that happen otherwise they're going to walk all over you time and time again you know what i mean and you're just going to have such a bloody hard time in prison you know and so what ended up happening was you know this this one dude this one dude that was in there, you know, he was, uh, he was doing like, I think about 38, 38, 39 years, you know, for murder. And, um, he ended up getting this kid and, you know, got him to move into his cell, you know, and, uh, this kid, you like, damn, you know, you, you, you could hear, you know, over night time, you know, like probably... You know, like uh, 11, 12 at night. You know, you could hear this kid screaming. You know, you could hear this kid screaming. And, you know, and it's like you can hear him yelling out, no, no, stop, stop. You know, and I was thinking of fucking hell, this poor kid, you know. You know, and I was thinking to myself, damn. You know, like, fuck, I know it's none of my business. You know, just leave it alone, just leave it alone. You know, and he ended up getting... You know, seen him come out the next morning, you know, when we got our uh, release from our cells the next morning at about 7 o'clock in the morning, you know, this poor kid comes out, you know, and he's trying to keep his head down. You know, he's trying to keep his head down. But you could see the bruises, you know, he had a black eye and he had a bruise on his cheek, on his cheekbone. You know, it was, it, yeah, it, was, it, was, it wasn't good, you know, and this poor kid, you know, he could barely walk. And this fucking piece of shit that done that to him, you know, he ended up punking him out, 
you know, to all of his mates, you know, handing him around to his mates, you know, and, you know, like, in prison, you know, you've got to keep to yourself and mind your own business, you know, but, you know, fuck me dead, I mean, I wasn't no veteran at, at this stage, you know, but, you know, I thought to myself, no, this fucking shit's wrong, you know what I mean? No other person's going to do something about it, help this fucking poor kid here, you know? So I thought, no, fuck this, I'm not going to fucking stand by and, you know, I mean, what happens if he gets killed, or, you know, and I would have felt even more like a fucking scumbag because I didn't do anything to help the poor kid, you know what I mean? And, uh, so, so what, what ended up happening was, you know, we, uh, we had lunch, you know, lunch came and, uh, had lunch, you know, and, um, I waited till that piece of shit was in the cell by himself, you know, and, uh, I went down there to his cell, I went up to his cell and, uh, you know, fucking knocked on the door and I said, he goes, what's up? And I said, I need to fucking talk to you, you know, this is fucking hell. And he goes, oh, you got a problem, have you? And I said, yeah, fucking half I've got a problem, you know. So I go into the cell, we can close the door, and I said, you're a fucking piece of shit, you know, you're a fucking piece of shit doing that to that poor kid, you know what I mean, fucking raping him and handing him around to all your mates, you're a fucking piece of shit, and he goes, what, what's the fucking business of yours, is it, you know, mind your own fucking business, who the fuck are you to come in here and fucking call me a piece of shit and a scumbag, you know, he goes, you want to watch who you're talking to, you know, he goes, I'm in for murder and doing, you know, 38 years. And, um, and I said, look, I don't give a fuck who you are and how long you're doing. That's fucking putrid. You know, and, and, you, and fucking you got to stop that shit. You and your fucking putrid mates. You know, if they've got a fucking problem, tell them to come to my cell and fucking we'll have a go there too. You know, so I thought, well, fuck all this talking shit. I've just gone bang. Put one straight in his chin, you know, and we get to fighting. We get to fighting in the cell. You know, we end up fighting in the cell, wrestling around, wrestling around in the cell. And um, what what he what he had on his on his uh, table on his little table, you know, he had this like little fan. He's, he had this little fan, so I fucking grabbed the fan. I fucking smashed him over the fucking head with a fan. You know, and um, I'll keep it totally 100. I'll keep it totally 100 with you guys. Like, he totally fucked me up. You know, totally fucked me up, this guy. I mean, busted me nose, busted me fucking mouth. You know, like, yeah, but he he had some cuts and fucking, you know, from when I smashed him out of the head with a fan. You know, cuts on his head and, you know, he had a fucking black eye himself. You know, but um, I ended up coming off second best, but... You know, um, that's why I say I'm going to keep it totally 100 with you guys. You know what I mean? And um, not going to, you know, make out that I went in there and, you know, fucking smashed him and, you know. But uh, it wasn't like that. But um, one thing I did is, you know, like, walked out of that cell. I walked into that cell and I walked out of that cell on my own. You know what I mean? And, um. Uh, what ended up happening was, you know, I was waiting for, you know, the comeback. I was waiting for the comeback, you know what I mean, from, you know, his piece of shit mates, you know, but uh, nothing ever happened, you know, like, nothing ever come with that. You know, that they didn't end up coming down to my cell and, you know, saying, you know, oh, yeah, you want to call me a piece of shit, whatever, you know, like, let's go. But that never happened, you know? It never happened, so, I mean, I wasn't really worried, but, um, I was just like, even though that, that, that was, like, done, you know what I mean, because we, we fought, and, you know what I mean, and, uh, that situation was done, but I was still weary of, the, of him, you know what I mean, like, I was still making sure that I knew where he was, you know, and, um, at that stage, I wasn't carrying a shiv, you know, which is, like, what they call in America, a prison shank. You know, but that was later on in my bid, you know, and um, in, in my other time that I did, you know, and um, so what I, what I ended up doing is, 
I went over to this kid, you know, I don't want to put his name out there. You know what I mean? Because damn, the poor kid went through enough as it is, you know. But um, I went over to him and I said, look, buddy. I said, look, that piece of shit, he's been taken care of. He's not going to come near you anymore. And I said, look, what I'm going to do is, I said, you know, because at that time I already had a soulmate. You know what I mean? I already had a good soulmate. You know, he was a good dude. You know, and um, I just wanted to you know, watch out for this kid, you know. And as I said before, at this stage I wasn't a veteran of, you know, going to prison. But I wasn't green and I knew enough, you know. And um, a lot of guys knew me and respected me. Cause they knew that, you know what I mean, that uh, I, I wasn't no punk. I wasn't no pussy. I would stand up for myself. I would have a go. You know what I mean? If something needed to be taken care of, I would do it. You know, and um, so what ended up happening was about a month later, um, my cellmate ended up going to court for his appeal because he was appealing his sentence, you know, and um, I think he was doing like a few years at that stage. Uh, five years actually he was doing at that stage and he appealed it. And, um, he ended up going to court for his appeal, and uh, he ended up getting uh, time served. He ended up getting time served and got out, you know, so he didn't end up coming back to, to prison, to, to Lisco Correctional Centre. So, um, what ended up happening was the next day, you know, I got that, I went out and I, was, I, was, I spoke, to this, spoke to that kid because I got him into another cell, you know, there was a... Uh, another cell there that was vacant and he had one guy in there and this guy was like I made sure that you know I put him in a safe cell that you know he was all right and um you know because the dude that you know ended up putting him in in the in the cell with you know he was a cool guy laid back guy you know and he wasn't about that bullshit you know and um so I ended up getting you know went over there and spoke to the kid and I said look my cellmate went to court he got out, you know, he went to court for his appeal and ended up getting out, you know, and um, if, if you're happy where you are, you can stay where you are, you know what I mean, or you can come up and live in a my cell, you know, and, and, and you like that idea, you know, so I uh, ended up getting him, you know, moving to my cell, we went and seen the officers, and, you know, the officers was okay with it, you know, and in fact, they turned around and said to this kid, yeah, I think that's a good idea that, you know, you get in the cell with Thompson, because they call you by your last name in prison, you know. So, um, yeah, he moved into my cell, you know, and um, and I was schooling him, I was schooling him on, on prison and what to do, what not to do, you know what I mean, and, um, over a period of time, he started to come out of his shell. You know what I mean? He started to come out of his shell, you know, once he got comfortable with me and knew that, he, you know, like, he was safe, he was okay. You know, and um, the poor kid shouldn't have even been in there because he was in there for break and enter, you know, doing 18 months for break and enter. And I'm like, what? He shouldn't even be in here. It's ridiculous, you know. You know, and um, so I was like educating him and schooling him on prison. You know, I was telling him, I said, look, one thing that you don't do, you know, you don't get into anyone's business. Stay out of everyone's business. Stay out of the way, you know, and there's two big no-nos that you don't do. You know, you don't gamble and you don't get involved in drugs because... Those two things can only lead to problems, nothing good ever comes from gambling or, or bloody using drugs, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, keep, you, keep, keep your ears open but your eyes down, you know what I mean? And whatever goes on around you, just keep you out of it. Never ever snitch, never ever snitch. You know, and, and he was very thankful that, you know, I was schooling him and educating him, you know, and because uh, before he never used to come out into the yard. He never used to come out into the yard, but, you know, 
while he was in the cell with me. You know, I used to take him out the yard. He'd come out the yard with me, you know, and um, I ended up getting him to work out with me. You know what I mean? And um, we were, you know, starting to work out, work out together. We used to get out there and play footy, you know. And um, what really shocked me because I wasn't expecting it, you know, like. He, uh, he gets a letter. He gets a letter one day from his parents. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, he gets a letter from his parents, you know, and in that letter, you know, because he was telling his parents about what was going on and what I did for him, you know, and he read out a part that his, uh, his parents wrote, you know, thanking me, you know, thanking me for what I did for their son, and for helping their son, you know, and for taking their son under my wing and looking after him, you know, and making sure he was okay, you know. And uh, they were very, very thankful for that. And, you know, I appreciated it very much. I wasn't expecting, I didn't want nothing in return. I was just happy to help this poor kid because I wasn't going to stand around and let this shit happen, you know, because that's just fucking wrong. You don't do that shit. You know, so... And what I ended up doing was, I spoke to him and I said, look, put in a slip to go and see welfare, you know, and talk to welfare uh, and see if the welfare can go and talk to, to CLASO, which is classification, you know, to try and get you out of this maximum security prison and into a lower security because here in, uh, here in Sydney, Australia, We've got maximum security prisons, we've got minimum security prisons, and we've got camps, you know. Um, it's not like America, where you've got jails and prisons. Here, it's just prisons, you know what I mean? But I'll speak on that in another video. So he gets caught out one day to see welfare, and, um, you know, spoke to welfare about how he wants, you know, to try and get out of here and get to a lower, lower prison. Uh, welfare agreed with that, you know, because, like, like, like I said, you shouldn't even be in that prison. You know, so a couple of weeks go by, he gets caught up again for, for classification. Um, and, you know, classification went through his records and, you know, considered everything. And they said, yeah, yeah. We agree to that you shouldn't be here and you shouldn't even be sent to a maximum security prison in the first place, being the first time and all. You know, so they end up lowering his uh, his level, lowering his level from maximum security to minimum security, um, and you know they ended up reclassifying reclassifying him to a minimum security prison, which was a camp. You know, and he was pretty happy about that. You know, and, um, you know, he was a good kid, you know, he was a good kid, easy to get along with, you know, he's, I mean, big heart, you know, he's got a good, good personality, he shouldn't even be in fucking prison, you know, I hope he's doing well to this day, wherever he is, but I remember when he came back that day from classification, you know, and a big smile on his face, you know, and I said, oh, it went well then, did it, buddy? And he goes, yeah, it went really well. He goes, I'm out of here. You know, they reclassified me and gave me a lower classification. I'm going to a camp. I'm like, oh, well, that's great, buddy. That's great to hear, you know. I'm, I'm happy that, that, you know, happy for you that you're getting out of here. You know, so, um, so yeah. So he ended up getting classified, reclassified, minimum security to a camp. And uh, maybe about a week, week and a half. You know, they called him up, pack your stuff, you're out of here. Yeah, and he was out of there and he got he was sent to a camp. You know, so, I mean, normally, you know, when you see shit like that happening in prison, you stay out of the way, it's nothing to do with you. But on this occasion, you know, I just couldn't do it. Just stand by and do nothing, you know, especially if, God forbid, you know, he got killed or whatever. Then I would have felt like a real fucking piece of shit, you know, because I didn't do nothing. You know, but, um, yeah, that, that story about uh, getting punked out, I hope you enjoyed your story, guys. Uh, if you did, I'd appreciate it very much if you give this a like, a subscribe, a comment, 
share this video um, on my next video that I'm going to drop is about telephones what goes down as far as using the telephones in prison uh, again you got any suggestions anything you want me to speak on uh, anything you would like to know drop a comment down below and I'm sure to uh, to uh, do a video on it and um, so yeah that's all I got for you today guys uh, please take care stay safe and I'll see you all again soon Aussie Prison Talk out peace